Welcome to CoreLogic's Housing Market Update for November 2024. Brought to you by First National Real Estate. As we approach the end of the year, there's clear signs the housing market is losing momentum and conditions are becoming more diverse from region to region. Nationally, dwelling values rose a further 0.3% in October, the 21st month of growth since the cycle commenced in February last year. The subtle positive movement was supported by the mid-sized capitals, led by Perth with a 1.4% rise over the month, offsetting declines in Darwin, Canberra, Melbourne and Sydney, as well as across regional Victoria. While the mid-sized capitals are still leading the charge when it comes to value growth, these markets are also losing momentum. Perth continues to lead the nation with a 1.4% rise in values over the month, but this is well down from the growth seen over the February to June period earlier in the year, when monthly gains averaged more than 2%. Adelaide values have risen by more than 1% each month since March, but conditions look to be slowing here as well, with October's 1.1% gain marking the lowest monthly rise since June. Brisbane's monthly gain of 0.7% was the lowest since July. The annual growth trend has continued to ease, reducing to 6% over the 12 months ending October and down from a recent peak annual rate of growth of 9.7% in February. Slower growth in home values has been accompanied by a rise in advertised stock levels, meaning more choice for buyers. Based on a rolling four-week count of listings to November 3rd, advertised inventory levels have increased by 14% since the end of winter across the combined capitals, with the largest increase occurring in Perth, where listings are 24% higher, albeit from an exceptionally low base. Total listings are now 12% above the previous five-year average in Sydney and Melbourne, helping to explain the weaker conditions in these markets as buyers benefit from more choice and less urgency in their decision-making. Despite the rise in listings across the mid-sized capitals, Perth, Adelaide and Brisbane are still seeing advertised stock levels more than 20% below the previous five-year average for this time of the year. And like other markets, sellers are in a better position here, although the balance is starting to gradually improve. Alongside the rise in advertised supply, the number of home sales looks to be fading. Estimates for capital city sales over the three months ending October were down 7.5% from three months earlier and 1.6% lower than at the same time last year. With higher levels of advertised supply and less purchasing activity, selling conditions have loosened. Capital city auction clearance rates held below the 60% mark through most of October while private treaty metrics are showing a subtle rise in median days on market, especially in those cities where advertised stock levels are above average. Rental growth is also slowing down. Annual rental growth has dropped to 5.8% nationally, the smallest annual rise in the National Rental Index since the 12 months ending April of 2021. The easing in rental growth is good news for inflation, with rents comprising one of the largest weights within the CPI basket. The annual change in the rental component of CPI has already started to trend lower, falling to 6.7% in the September quarter, down from a recent high of 7.8% in Q1 this year. Weaker rental trends across the unit sector have weighed on rental growth, with rents slipping across the unit markets of Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Hobart and Canberra over the three months ending October 2024. Although rental trends are easing more visibly across the unit sector, some cities have also seen a decline in house rents over the rolling quarter. Sydney house rents were down 0.1% over the rolling quarter, and in the ACT house rents were down 0.4%. Softening rental conditions are likely symptoms of slowing net overseas migration, which peaked through the first quarter of 2023, as well as changes in household formation, as the average household size gradually increases following its pandemic shrink. Melbourne's housing market has recorded seven consecutive months of decline, with the market down a further 0.2% in October, taking values 0.8% lower over the rolling quarter to be down 1.9% over the past 12 months. The unit sector has been more resilient to the downturn, but not immune. Values across the unit sector have fallen by 0.6% over the past three months, while house values were down a larger 1%. We've also seen weaker conditions across the more expensive sector of the market, with upper quartile values down 1.2% over the past three months, while lower quartile values have fallen by a smaller 0.3%. Rental yields have leveled out, with house rents nudging only 0.1% higher over the past three months, while unit rents have slipped 0.4% lower. The housing outlook looks a little dimmer than it did a few months ago amid rising advertised stock levels, a slowdown in purchasing activity, and a clear loss of momentum in value growth. 
On the upside, there's a trend towards lower inflation, meaning a cut in interest rates is looking likely, potentially in the first quarter of next year, while labor markets are holding tight and low levels of newly built housing supply persist. Each of these factors should help to keep a floor under housing prices. The inflation update for Q3 was encouraging, with core inflation now at 3.5%. Based on the trimmed mean, consumer prices are now rising at the slowest quarterly pace since the third quarter of 2021. The annual increase in the housing component of inflation fell to just 2.8%, the lowest reading since Q3 of 2021, thanks to a sharp 7.6% decline in utility costs attributable to energy rebates. However, a slowdown in rents and the cost of newly built homes has supported the lower inflation outcome as well. The annual change in CPI rents at 6.7% is the lowest in five quarters, and it's likely to fall further given the downwards trend in advertised rents. Additionally, the cost to purchase newly built housing rose by a relatively small 4.8%, down from a COVID high of 20.7%, to be the lowest outcome since the third quarter of 2021. A similar drop in the growth of construction costs can be seen in the Cordell Construction Cost Index, which increased by 3.2% over the year to September, well below the pre-COVID decade average of 4.1%. The weak trend in new housing construction looks entrenched, with dwelling approvals holding well below average. Commencements are trending lower and the number of dwellings under construction is diminishing. A material turnaround in residential construction activity over the coming year remains unlikely given feasibility challenges and tight labour supply. Supply-side policies aimed at improving project feasibility, such as funding infrastructure costs, are likely to be well received and should provide some immediacy in kick-starting shovel-ready projects. While the delivery of new housing supply remains insufficient, it's hard to see housing values move through any sort of a material downturn. On the downside, affordability challenges persist across most sectors of the Australian housing market. Economic activity is soft and households have largely drawn down their savings buffers built up through the pandemic. Looking at affordability measures, debt servicing ratios were at a record high in the June quarter and dwelling values relative to household incomes were also close to record highs. While lower interest rates will help to improve serviceability and boost sentiment, a tightening in credit regulations is another potential risk if household debt levels rise as interest rates come down. There's always plenty to keep on top of when it comes to housing trends and the factors that influence the market. As always, you can stay up to date via the research and news pages at the CoreLogic website.